In this video, I'll show how to implement functionality in XAF applications. For this purpose, I'll introduce you to controllers and actions and use them to add a new feature to the application we created in the previous tutorials. So let's get started. A simple way of providing functionality in non-XAF applications is to hook up directly to UI controls. For instance, you could add a button to a form and handle its on-click event. In XAF, things are somewhat different because we allow you to provide functionality to both target platforms at once. There are two building blocks in XAF that are related to this task, controllers and actions. They allow you to provide new or modify existing functionality. Controllers sit in the background and they are activated automatically by the framework at certain points, for instance, when a particular data type is being viewed. This allows you to hook into standard framework functionality and modify or extend it. An action, on the other hand, provides end-user interaction. Generally speaking, you add an action to a controller, handle its execute event, and the framework will create an appropriate control and call your code when the end-user interacts with the control. For the first look at actions, let me run the application. All the toolbar items are controls that have been created for actions included in the XAF modules that are used by the application. As you can see, various different controls are used, from a simple button to a navigation control. In a website, actions are displayed using ASP.NET controls, buttons, tab pages, and others. By default, the framework creates a particular control for each action type. Now it's time to show an example of a controller and action. I'm going to create a controller that contains an action which clears all fields in the current detail view. To add a controller, I use a standard add new item dialog. In the dialog, I choose the view controller template, specify a name, and press OK. As a result, I get an automatically generated code file with a single view controller declaration. To set up the controller, I run the controller designer. I set the target view type property to the detail view value to activate the controller for detail views only. To add an action to my controller, I'll use the toolbox tab. There are several action types. For each action type, a particular control is created. Note that you can replace the default controls that are used to display actions with custom ones. The details of this process are not a subject of this tutorial. This relates to extensibility of XAF. Since my action should be displayed as a button, I'll add a simple action. Now I need to set up the new action in the Properties window. To implement the code that will be executed when an end user clicks the button that represents my action, I handle the Execute event. My handler sets the null value to all property editors from the current detail view. Property editors are UI independent detail view objects that bind UI editors to the corresponding properties. So when executing this action, all the editors in the current detail view will be emptied and as a result, all the corresponding properties will be set to null. In ASP.NET Web applications, there are two modes for displaying detail views, view and edit modes. The clear fields action should only be available when a detail view is displayed in the edit mode. So I'm returning to the controller's designer and subscribing to the activated event in the Properties Windows Events view. Then I'm handling the View Edit Mode Changed event and modify the Actions Enabled collection based on the current edit mode. Here we need to check if the current Detail View Edit Mode changed. If it's changed to View Mode, the action should be deactivated. Now let me show you how to change settings of an action or controller using the application model. 
I'll make some customizations to my action settings. I navigate to the Actions node. It contains all actions that take part in UI construction. Here's the node that defines the action I just created. By default, the tooltip attribute is set to the caption attribute's value. I set a more informative value instead. Then, I set the shortcut attribute to Control C. Finally, I specify the confirmation message attribute. The current object identifier will be inserted into the confirmation message if the action's selection dependency type property or the attribute in the model is not set to the independent value. So in this case, I set the require single object value. Now I'm done. Let's run the application. I'm going to test the action for a contact object. Here it is. I click the Clear Fields button and there's the confirmation message with the text I've specified. All fields on the detail form are emptied. Note that the action isn't displayed in the list view since my controller is configured to be activated in detail views only. To finish the tutorial, I'll have a look at my action in the website. Everything works in the same way as in the Windows Forms application since I did my work in the common module. To learn more about other action types, use cases for controllers, and a detailed description of the controller and action concept, please refer to the XAF documentation. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.